The 2010s was a roller coaster of a decade for film. We saw Disney dominating at the box office, but we also saw the rise of streaming and the decline of movie ticket sales. Despite the fact that so many amazing films were produced, we did manage to narrow down our list. So without any further ado, here are our top 10 movies of the 2010s. Number 10, Call Me By Your Name. Call me by your name and I'll call you by mine. The mood of Call Me By Your Name mirrors the hot and relaxing Italian summer days that are depicted in the film. Set in 1983, Call Me By Your Name tells the story of the slow burn romance between two young lovers, Elio and Oliver. Luca Guadagnino's stylized direction is entrancing, as are the performances by Army Hammer and Timothy Chalamet. And the movie also features Michael Stuhlbarg delivering one of cinema's all-time great monologues. Call Me By Your Name is a realistic depiction of young love that is amplified by several tender original songs from Sufjan Stevens. All in all, any movie that can forever change the way that society looks at peaches is a film worth celebrating. Number nine, eighth grade. Being yourself can be hard, and it's like, aren't I always being myself? Seeing life itself play out with such specific detail can be scary, which is exactly what 8th grade delivers. The film follows Kayla Day in her last week of 8th grade, dealing with the difficult moments that this time of life brings. She looks forward to the next big step, high school, and like everyone, she wants to be cool and confident. The honesty of the film rests heavily on the shoulders of Elsie Fisher, who plays Kayla. Her performance is painfully recognizable, from the stuttering to the subtlest of eye twitches. This film is very specifically of its time. Kayla deals with social media, technology, and changing social attitudes. But Bo Burnham's script somehow also captures something both individual and universal. Even if you haven't lived as a middle schooler in the time of YouTube videos, or the pervasive use of the internet, even if you haven't experienced the joys and pains of American girlhood firsthand, at the heart of the film is an experience that we can all relate to one of anxiety, wanting to be liked, and having absolutely no idea what we're doing. Number eight, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. What makes you different is what makes you Spider-Man. When talking about Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, we have to talk about the visuals and the technical achievement of pulling off the wildly artistic vision of the art directors. The animation is the bold combination of an uber-saturated 2D comic book with its grid-like color cells and the more realistic 3D computer-generated animation. It's visually stunning and, quite simply, like nothing we've ever seen before. But visuals can only carry a movie so far. Into the Spider-Verse also fully delivers on story, which is a tough challenge for any film, but especially a film released in this context. We've seen far too many iterations of Spider-Man in less than two decades, and frankly, the zeitgeist is a bit fatigued by the constant reboots. In addition to the humorous and whip-smart script, one of the main reasons the Spider film is so fresh is because our Spider protagonist isn't Peter Parker at all. He's Miles Morales, a young Afro-Latino kid from Brooklyn bitten by a different radioactive spider. Spider-Verse is the best animated film of the decade because despite all of the cards stacked against it, it's somehow the most original. Number seven, The Florida Project. The man who lives in here gets arrested a lot. These are the rooms we're not supposed to go in. But let's go anyway. The brightly colored cinematography in The Florida Project contrasts with the heavy nature of the film's subject to create a darkly beautiful film about childhood. The film is about Mooney, a six-year-old girl living with her struggling mother in one of the motels near Disney World. The fully realized characters are the heart of this film and are elevated by the amazing performances by Willem Dafoe and the rest of the cast, which is especially impressive considering that no one besides Dafoe had ever acted before in a film. Like in his previous film, Tangerine, Sean Baker acts as writer, director, and editor, proving that he is a master of his craft. Additionally, he avoids exploiting the subject matter of poverty in his film through an extremely honest and unbiased depiction of his characters. There are no protagonists and no antagonists, just people. Baker has figured out how to distill these seemingly simple moments into an extraordinary film. I love you too! Number six, The Social Network. He's directed so many masterpieces at this point that it seems rather superfluous to praise David Fincher. But when you combine Fincher with an Aaron Sorkin screenplay, the result is something that should probably be acknowledged and revered, which is exactly what we get with The Social Network. On a surface level, The Social Network is about the rise of Mark Zuckerberg and Facebook, but the film is much more interested in the human aspect of the story. 
As Sorkin said, the invention itself is as modern as it gets, but the story is as old as storytelling. Themes of friendship, loyalty, jealousy, class, and power. Fincher brings Sorkin's neo-Shakespearean screenplay to life, perfectly balancing a dozen characters, non-linear storytelling, and intertwining narrative arcs. Jesse Eisenberg delivers his best performance ever, and when you put all of those elements together, you get an outstanding film that will hopefully outlive Facebook itself. Number five, Lady Bird. I wanna go to the East Coast. I wanna go where culture is, like How New York. How in the world did I raise such a Or at least snow. Connecticut or New Hampshire, oh, where writers live in the get woods. Get into those schools anyway. Mom! Greta Gerwig and Saoirse Ronan are a match made in indie Hollywood heaven. Lady Bird carries the same wit and tone we've seen in films Gerwig has starred in, but with her at the reins as writer and director, we get a window into her soul as she shows us the painful and endlessly funny roller coaster that is the life of a teenage Catholic school rebel. This semi-autobiographical film is crammed full of genuine moments, showcasing the good, bad, and ugly aspects of family, friendship, and growing up. Ronan once again proved that she is one of the most talented actresses ever and works perfectly with Laurie Metcalf to nail their contentious mother-daughter relationship dynamic. Gerwig shows that she's talented beyond her years as Lady Bird shrewdly explores family dynamics and social status in an extremely honest and entertaining film. Number four, Mad Max Fury Road. Where is she taking them? Who would have thought that an artistic, feminist movie from The Man Who Made Happy Feet would not only be one of the best action films of the decade, but one of the best films of all time? Well, Mad Max Fury Road is all of that and more. Set in the not-so-distant dystopian future, Mad Max has a fairly straightforward plot. Max and Furiosa attempt to outrun and escape the warlord Immortan Joe and his deadly caravan. Technically, the film is flawless. Its acting, directing, stunts, editing, and choreography are all top-notch. The film's stripped-down plot allows room for the action to really shine. Mad Max has more memorable moments in one five-minute action sequence than other action movies have in their entire runtime. The film is wild, immersive, and hardly ever slows from its full-throttle action insanity. Number three, Boyhood. One of the many things that makes Boyhood exceptional is that it was filmed over a 12-year period, a singular and Herculean filmmaking achievement. But Boyhood probably would have had a very good shot of making our top 10 list even if it was produced like a regular film, due to Richard Linklater's beautiful storytelling. Boyhood follows the day-to-day -day life of a boy, Mason, played by Eller Coltrane, who started filming at the age of six and finished at the age of 18. Linklater created a fulfilling narrative, slowly piecing it together as they filmed every summer from 2002 to 2013. Patricia Arquette deservedly won the Academy Award for Best Supporting Actress, and Ethan Hawke turned in one of his routinely outstanding performances as well. A totally unique approach to creating a film, combined with Arquette, Hawke, and Linklater at the height of their powers, created this stellar, one-of-a-kind masterpiece. Number two, Moonlight. Where's you, Sharon? From director Barry Jenkins, Moonlight follows Chiron, a boy living in the projects of Miami as he grapples with his harsh home life and his sexuality. The film's earnest script is complemented by a dreamy pastel color palette, an aching score from Nicholas Bertel, and an outstanding cast from top to bottom, including an Academy Award-winning performance from Mahershala Ali. It was also the first Academy Award Best Picture winner to feature an all-black cast, and the first one that had a prominent LGBT theme. Moonlight is a beautiful and deeply moving depiction of masculinity. Every aspect of the film is perfect, and yet somehow it still manages to be more than the sum of its parts. A magnum opus for everyone involved. Number one, Get Out. So how long has this been going on, this, this thing? <laughs> Writer and director Jordan Peele announced himself as an auteur with Get Out, a mystery thriller that is a spot-on commentary about race in America. Get Out begins with a black photographer, Chris, tentatively agreeing to go visit and meet with his white girlfriend's family for the first time. Her family seems nice on the surface, but Chris can't help but notice that something seems strange about her parents' house. Peele's script is tense, funny, and rewards viewers for repeat viewings with dozens of Easter eggs. But more than anything, it's an incredibly sharp critique of liberal racism and the lie of a post-racial America. 
we think this film is the best of the decade for being exceedingly clever, thrilling, rewatchable, and for its scathing and poignant social commentary. So what did you think of our list? What's your favorite? Let us know in the comments.